So here's another episode of The Corner Booth. This time around, we're going to be interviewing a voice actress. Hi, my name is Luis Cascopar. I'm a storyboard artist in The Simpsons television show. I've been working on the show for over 20 years now, and I'm here to empower you. This time around, we talked to Debbie Derryberry, and she's a voice, a voice actress. She was actually the voice of Jimmy Neutron, and she's actually did some anime voices, among a bunch of other things. And so we actually talked to her and we uh, see what voice acting is all about, as well as banter a lot. There's a lot of snarky, snarky talk and commentary here. Uh, it's just a bit ridiculous, the amount of snark coming out of everybody here. And, 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 and also, uh, almost near the end, uh, we get interrupted. We get interrupted by yet another artist. It's a fellow uh, Simpsons alum that uh, is now working. Uh, well, at the time of that recording, he was working on uh, Rick and Morty uh, and, uh, and other things. So uh, stick around. I, I was meant to edit him out. But as I listened to the audio recording this time around, I thought, you know what? Forget it. Why not? This is this is this happened, and I thought that it would be probably best to just leave leave that there so that you could uh, listen to the full unedited conversation. All right. So without any further ado, let's uh, listen to the episode. I'm just curious because uh, uh, the place to everybody. Okay. Skunk and Tiny Tunes. Actually, we're recording right now, so if anybody wants to, because oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're we were we we started talking. No segue before. is the best segue. <laughs> Hi, this is the quarter booth. Uh, <laughs> what? See, see, so Larry's that, that making just, cut, uh, slashing of his throat motions. We think he's going to murder someone <laughs> later. We want you to stop and start over. <laughs> Or, or cut this out later, which we're not going to do. <laughs> we're right, totally not going to do that. Go ahead, Chance. <laughs> welcome to the corner booth. <laughs> we're back. We love you. We missed you. And welcome. And uh, boy, we got a treat for you guys today. I'm going to let Larry talk about it because his mouth is full of sound. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, we're here at the Buchanan Arms. <laughs> back at the Buchanan. Yes. yes. And this quarter booth is brought to you by Ghost Rain Pictures. <laughs> Makers of fine family entertainment. <laughs> Actually, what's really cool is Ghost Dream Pictures. My independent company is working on a game right now. I've got a short film we're working on, so check out the stuff on Facebook on the Ghost Train Pictures page. If you want to see some of our artwork in our more professional venue, you can go to ghosttrainpictures.com. That's ghost and then T for train, pictures.com. We're here today with Debbie Derryberry. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. I was a little bit late, and Larry had to help me park. Who, yeah, yes. I won't talk about all the scratches on her bumper. Apparently, she's a master at it. I am really, really good at it. And those, those scratches are not all from parking, by the way. Oh, man. Are, are they okay? Are they out of the hospital now? Or? The scratches are war wounds on my beater. Battle scars. And they give me, they give me calmness in Los Angeles because I don't have to worry about getting a scratch on my car. Yeah. Because what's one more? Right? right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I and love the, ca it. the cane embedded in the uh, in the bumper. <laughs> so what are you having to drink for lunch, Debbie? <laughs> well, I'm having a diet. Did I miss something? No. I'm having a diet Pepsi. Oh, I thought maybe the, the scratches on oh, the car. Oh, were... a drink. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cocktail hour here yet, Larry. Silly yeah. man. That's right. It's another 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Debbie. Is an actress, or should I say actor? I never know what to you say You can anymore. say actress because I have boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Girls have bumps. <laughs> <laughs> Dot com. That's the copyright corner booth. <laughs> that's like, oh my that's God. From a, what? I would not go there because it probably exists. <laughs> Wasn't it like in, the, in Living Color skit where it was like the Ken and Barbie? Wait, this is G-rated. I'm sorry. Let me rewind. You can call me actress or actor because... I think that helps people know whether you're a boy or a girl, even though I play boys on TV. Uh, oh. Wow. 
<laughs> but only on television. <laughs> and radio sometimes. Oh, okay. A lot. Non-visual media. Voice acting. Right. Excellent. And so, some on camera. So cool. Debbie and I met in a voice class many years ago when I was working on Tiny Toons. We were in Charlie Adler's class together. With Chris Zimmerman. Chris Zimmerman. Right. Who are both still very active in voiceover and really good. And then we've all gone so many different ways, but we're all still in voiceover and still all involved in so many different projects. I hear it's a very small niche industry. Is that true? Do you find that you work with a lot of the same people? I do, but it has gotten really available to so many people. Okay, great. I think for, I don't know, maybe it's just, how can I say this? There are the, the core group of people that work all the time, that you see all the time. Um, but because it because animation's gotten so, so big, you can audition from anywhere and you can uh, have anybody in your cast anywhere at any time. Cool. Oh, that's really interesting. And then there's the whole um, other part of it that is on, you know, things that aren't television. You know, right. that there's the whole app thing and the computer thing and the webisodes and the... There's so many new avenues to go down that need this kind of talent. Different yeah. media streams. Cool. <clears throat> it's just kind of exploded. Well, that's but encouraging. For me, I've always stayed in my pigeonholed niche, which is this character -y voice, um, and I can do non-character voices as well, but I don't know, I stay in this, I love what I do. I was thinking the other day, um, if I ever want to do anything different, and I... I I don't, because I like what I do. I yeah. love what I, think I do. I think about singing sometime. <laughs> Roast beef is to Larry. Thank you. With that puff thing. And uh, one piece <laughs> Yes, thank you. Larry, we'll if right you don't eat the other. puff thing, I will totally hit that up again <laughs> next week. <laughs> the Isn't that Yorkshire thing? pudding? I think that's what it's called. Yeah, you didn't yeah, eat it last sure. week, and it was, it's good if you want it. Please kill it, but if you don't, I'll take it. Okay. Are we going to like have an interview or just eat, tell people about our, our, min, our menu? Items? So here's how you make the puff thing. <laughs> <laughs> you start with three eggs, not two. Okay. Oh, um, boy. Thank you so wow, much. Wow, that is a heck of a bowl. Sorry about that. And you're going to finish every bite of that, Chance. Yes, Young I man. Am. Oh, my God. I accidentally scratched her finger. I feel bad. So we were talking about on the different... But you should be, and I sing you should also. be singing. Well, oh, you, you do? Know, I love singing, and I've always been a singer, and I thought I was going to be a singer until Dad told me you can't make a living doing anything but going to college and being a doctor, so... What? I, um, <laughs> Thanks, Dad! You know what? He, he, he had... Um, he had good intentions. He meant well, yeah. He was looking he meant out well. for you. He just... Um, I guess it's hard to recognize someone's passion if you're not living inside their heart. Thank you so much. Can I have one more ranch dressing? You know, my dad did Western art bronze and painted on the side as he was also a fireman. And my, I was very fortunate. I found this. There's, there's two, two camps, at least, that I found. Parents that were very supportive or parents that were not. And I seldom found something that was in between. Huh. And, so and with I don't me, think it's it a parent's fault. Well. No. They just sometimes are too busy and they're like, yeah, you get on with your stuff and whatever you do, you're going to do. So I got my guitar when I was nine and I wrote songs all the time and I've, I've written hundreds of songs and I've been singing and singing forever. But I can't say I've ever made a lot of money in it. I started out with some country albums after I decided not to go to med school and moved to Nashville and then when I had my kid, I moved into preschool music and I have a few more albums out in preschool and I... It's a good thing you didn't like move away and join the circus and become a clown. Well, I did that TV series as a clown. No, wait, I guess that, that qualifies. <laughs> I moved away and become a clown. Because <laughs> I was on Hey Vern, it's Ernest as a boy clown. Yes. You know, Larry, your segues are brilliant. Because <laughs> I, I act like I don't, I think I don't know what you're talking about, and then all of a sudden I realize that you had this whole thing premeditated. <laughs> it's like you sat up all night trying to figure how to get me to talk about that. So you were on Hey Vern, It's Ernest, the Saturday morning show? I was. I was the boy clown. That and, is um, awesome. They what? didn't even audition me. They saw me playing Scout in To Kill a Mockingbird in Nashville as a 12-year-old boy when I was in my late 20s and just cast me. I'm like, oh, what is it? Just come in. We'll dress you up like a clown and you'll do this. 
and I had no idea it was a you know a national on camera TV series. All yeah. of a sudden, I'm in Screen Actors Guild. All of a sudden, I'm getting checks, and I'm quitting my job, waiting tables, and moving home. Yay! Yeah, and, yay! And what did Dad say? A dad came and got me and drove me back and had to listen to Pirates of Penzance the whole way back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember what he said. He was, he was kind of proud of me. I think he was always petrified that I wasn't going to be able to make a living. Like, when is the next job coming? And it's always frightening, but I've managed to do it for 25 years. I guess that qualifies as a career. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but what's your next one going to be? <laughs> <laughs> There's still a chance to go to med school. <laughs> you know, I do always wish I had gone to med school. I think I'd be an awesome doctor, but who would believe me? I'd be like, I'm going to take out your appendix now. <laughs> and then we're going to sing. <laughs> like, yeah, we're all, the while, all the while wearing clown makeup. <laughs> and then while you're doing the operation, you can be singing, ding dong, the witch is dead. Uh-huh. That'd be or awesome. preschool music. Yeah. Now, one of my preschool songs a few of them were on the charts, but one of them went to number one. That's wow. awesome. On XM series. That was pretty exciting, having wow, your, my cool. publicist call and say, guess what, your, your song hit number one on the charts. That's Woo-hoo. awesome. Isn't it? Not... Yeah, it was Baby Banana, but heck, it did, it didn't it? But it's hard to make money in any entertainment venue these days because everything's digitalized and downgraded and uh, anyone can... Can can put anything up. I mean, somebody oh. who gets out of junior yep. high can throw up something flash on the computer and it'll go viral and boom. Somebody else who has gone to Cal Arts for 18 years and all of a sudden comes out with something brilliant and they've worked it and pitched it and pitched it and pitched it and pitched it and, pitched it and, pitched it and it just it dead in the water. Yeah. So, so where's where's the so fairness? You're, so you're saying I should just give up. <laughs> <laughs> Having gone to Cal Arts, <laughs> although I didn't, I didn't go there for well, eighteen I don't years. Know. Well, w- w- wouldn't that would wouldn't that make it actually more fair for everybody? Uh, like <laughs> that now it's like now everybody there's no. You're saying that everyone has the same opportunity. Yes. Because there's no holds bars and there's no. Um, whatever whatever what clicks the with level, the audience. There's no like bar. Yeah. yeah. And can I like because you sh- never know. It's so true, and I'd love to chime in here with a, with another level of this whole thing. The gate has been torn down, and that's the whole. To a degree, to, well, a de- well, to a degree, to a degree. That's not, the, not the big movies yet, because the, the the big studios still have the distribution arms. Well, yes, mm-hmm. but that's very true. But the, as far as creators are concerned, like what you, you were what you were talking here. about, you know, there, there's no more gatekeepers per se. I mean, you, they still exist, but those there are so many avenues that people are act- actively pursuing mm-hmm. as a standard practice now, like crowdfunding and um, independent distribution, and like you said, just releasing it online and having it go viral. And I think a lot of pe- people's dreams of you know, pitching to Nick or Disney or Net- Cartoon Network and having them pick it up and having it go to series. Yeah, that's one roadmap. It's just one. But exactly. it's not really the money maker because yeah. they take your creative and they take everything and you're left with, oh, that was my idea once. You know, people are making more money sometimes in international stuff. True. When you go and do a preschool show for UK or for um, Africa or something and all of a sudden you're making more money than you would somewhere else. If yeah. That's, if that's true, Debbie, when are we going to do our show? Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't miss a beat. Didn't Daddy. even miss a beat. Daddy wants a new Mustang. <laughs> well, you know... I, Mommy the, wants... What do I want? Oh, I want to redo my bathroom. <laughs> All I need is my solid gold house and my rocket car, and I'll be <laughs> set. <laughs> what about the hoverboard? Oh, dude, and the hoverboard, <laughs> yes. Do you want uh, a french fry? I would love one, thank you. Well, you finance the company that makes the hoverboard and just oh, well, franchise you. rights alone. Did you say no thank you? Oh, I said thank you. Better. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, well, do, do we actually want to talk about the other stuff that Debbie did, or are we pretty much wrapping it up here? <laughs> <laughs> i just like to throw in one final thought on the whole pitching thing. Uh-huh. That dream that all of us had to pitch to fill in the blank your favorite animation studio or uh-huh. network and get it picked up. Thank because you, your idea is so brilliant that how can, it be, how can it not be awesome? Oh, no, exactly. Like, even the awesome ones, 
uh, the you, you said something very true, Debbie. That the the that that route's not the money maker, and that I think it never was. It was simply the only way to go before, and mm-hmm. now there's so many other better ways to go for a lot of people. Better, uh, more ex- <laughs> accessible. Exactly. <laughs> Doable. Yeah. Basically, the the fact that you can do self distribution at least to some degree pretty easily. Mm-hmm. You put things up on YouTube. If you get a following before you go to Nick or somewhere else, they have to give you a better deal because and they, they know that you. you're not the. That's right. Yeah, but I mean, also, look at Annoying Orange yeah. and, and yeah. things like that. Yeah, but it so. but it really does um, put the burden on the creator who thinks if I only had the chance, it, I, I would be it, it would be famous. And it's like really, then put it out there and right, see. Right, because here's your chance. And that, it's so true. There, there is no there is no excuse now. Like and no excuse. Right. Everyone has a chance. It's <laughs> not about how good you are. It's about how hard you are willing to work and how maybe right place, right time still holds true. Very true. Yeah, but so let's continue. So what you you your first uh, gig was actually the the. Hey, Bernard Ernest. No, that was my first TV series. <laughs> I mean, well, and then what led you into voice acting from that point on? Well, the agent that uh, cast that represented me for that series also said, hey, do you want to do stand-in work for the boys in the movie Hey, uh, Ernest Goes to Camp? And you yes. can be in what you can <laughs> see so me, but so I'm... stand-in? You mean like... Stand-in is when the actor is just a kid and can only be on set for so many hours, so they get a grown-up to do the time-consuming things like stand in their spot while they set the lights and the, the height. And since I'm the height and the same coloring and the same everything as the boys, that's I did the stand-in work because I'm not proud. I pretty much will do anything. Cool. As long as it pays me and it's work and it makes me feel like I'm contributing to some creative thing, I'm happy. Awesome. So, um, one of the women of the mom of one of the boys, uh, Scotty Menville's mom, Dottie Menville, was on the set while I was standing in, and uh, she said to me, your lead's falling out of your pencil. Really? Is that what she and said? She said oh, no, she didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> she said, sorry, Lewis's lead was falling out of his mechanical pencil. She said, have you ever considered voice work? And I'm like, what is that? She goes, well, animation. I'm like, no. I never even thought about it. Did me? you say it just like that? No. No. <laughs> yeah, probably. Get well, back, out of here. back then, I would talk like this. this. This is my trained voice. But back then, my voice was up here all the time, right? That's what I sounded like, because it's easy. But now I do this. Anyway, huh. I, uh, she gave me some wow. names of casting directors, and I had my um, portable typewriter back then, the kind that I thought I was just the cat's pajamas because you pressed <laughs> the, the, the button and you could go back over your mistakes. I love those. Now, what was this called? A typewriter. It was a typewriter. Type it was an electric typewriter that you could take with you, a portable and, one, and it batter, had and batteries. And what do they do? What's a typewriter do? Well, it lets you type words, and it actually had a memory that went back oh, a few words. Oh, it's a computer. Words. So it was a keyboard with a paper in it. Pretty much. So it was like a computer printer combo. No, at the beginning of this um, interview, you told me there was only allowed to be one smart <laughs> Okay, I'll give that to you, Larry. You take it. Take it, baby. <laughs> so I wrote letters to the casting directors and the <laughs> the people she told me, oh, look at you're drawing Batman. Is that what they told you? And then, <laughs> no, he's drawing Batman. <laughs> they said, yes, you have a good voice, your demo is cute, you have to live in L.A. So I got divorced and moved to L.A. and called up one of them, Ginny McLean, and she said, sure. And she called ICM and they signed me that day. And I started ICM. booking two weeks later, 25 years ago. Wow. I remember when ICM called me in, they heard my voice tape, and they said, okay, you have to be ready to leave and go where we tell you anytime, any moment, uh-huh. and we want you to do voice work. And I said, no. And they said, what? <laughs> I, said, I said, I'm an animation supervisor at Warner Brothers Features. I can't leave at any moment. You are? I said, yes. I do voice work on the side from time to time. Oh, well. Bye-bye. Uh, so they brought me and had me do one reading, and then it was bye-bye. <laughs> oh, you know what? When people come to me and they say, I really want to do some voiceover. I think it would be fun to do part-time. I pause, and I think, oh, like that, that successful realtor who works part-time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it really doesn't work that way. It's a full-time gig. you got to, you know, if you have a, a lucky gig that, yeah, I work full-time in an office and, or whatever, and then I get to go on Friday nights and record. It doesn't really happen that way in my world. 
Do they just but, call like, you at any time like Rich, on any day? Well, I'm sorry, go ahead. But people like Rich Moore, myself, people that work in the industry that actually make the films, we do voices occasionally. Yeah, you can throw side. yourself cool. bones and do them. That's cool. Because you know about the stuff and you say, we don't even need to cast this. I can knock that out. Yeah. Yeah, or, or you or you temp, and then it ends up being better than anybody they want. That's happened to me too. It's happened a few times. Debbie's drawing pictures of or something. It's a scribble. Yay. That is really good. It's a girl. A circle, eyes and a smiley and a mouth, and hair. Mm-hmm. Watch out, Louise. She's trying to go. It's not go nearly as now. detailed and fabulous as your Batman's coming along beautiful. I don't even know if it's Batman. But it is. It's, it's Batman. Batman. It's Batman Beyond. <laughs> this one time on a, I was on like a, a unicycle sh- promo show. Yeah, that, unicycle. I, that was a very short lived career. <laughs> Lasted about five seconds. That, that's, that was uh, when you used to talk like this. Before the yeah, exactly, exactly. Now I'm way up here. Hey, guys. But um, what, what the, the unicycle accident. Before the unicycle accident, I was on this little, like, promo thing, and I was, I was, uh, I was like, it was like the idea on the show was like, you know, you're supposed to be impressing this girl. So I'm drawing, I'm sketching, and... The idea was like, oh, you won't be able to see what I'm drawing until the, you know, after I say this. And so she's like, well, can you draw me? Draw me. And I said like, well, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but I'm pretty good. And then I drew something that was like, you know, a stick figure. <laughs> and then I sh- hold it up. And she was just like, you know, okay, get out. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And then the the, the 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 surprise that I didn't tell anyone about is like I had actually like because it was she was like an up and coming uh, stand up comedian so I had found pictures of her online and I drew a real like good version of her and I had it in the back of the sketchbook so before I left I was like oh by the way here you go and she was like what <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> thinking ahead are you chance I try uh, I try <laughs> it's very rare though <laughs> like wait a minute I should have thought ahead. Like that one time. <laughs> so, so are we gonna finish? Debbie, 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 now? You know, well, we can hear more about Debbie, Chance because he's dating. Debbie, 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 you know, I'm sorry. I'm say so. We were on the um, <laughs> the Nashville, and then we moved back here, and then it was ICM, and then it was working, and then animation, and um, uh, yeah, and then oh, we were talking about how is that how it is? They just call you and say, "Come do this voice," or it used to be that I'd get these giant auditions, like for the Adams Family audition, they're doing 65 episodes or whatever, or Jimmy Neutron. And, well, that was one of those ones where that was for an interstitial role. So you did get some of these jobs. Yeah, I got some of that job. That's good. Yeah. And uh, then they would, like the Jimmy Neutron thing was first interstitial, and then who, it who was did, a feature. Who did you do on Jimmy Neutron? Oh, I, you're asking me. Okay, I did Jimmy Neutron. That's how I'm famous. I was Jimmy. Batman the Clown on that Ernest Kids show. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I watched like clockwork in Saturday mornings. I loved that show. That was a great show. I loved all the Ernest stuff, though. Jim Barney's the man. He, he sure was. He was the man. He was. He was. He was very smart. He did all the very Brahms literate. ice cream commercials in my hometown. Or in security. There were several. There were several ice cream companies that he did the commercials for in Brahms, which is a which is a uh, Oklahoma-based awesome ice cream company. Was one of the ones he did. It I saw one of those commercials. Yeah. There, there was like a, a Jim Barney blooper reel that it's, I watched. It's before he was. Before he was doing his movies and the kids show and that's before he, Toy Story and all that stuff. That's where Ernest came from, right? Was the commercials. Yep. Right. I exactly love, where it came from. They're the best, man. There needs to be like a compilation DVD you can buy of all the Ernest stuff. Yeah, that, that'd be good. I would love that. I bet you could find some of it on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> so the way it's changed now is I don't and and I think the successful people or the people who want to remain in the business have to stay a little bit technologically advanced, Mm -hmm. which, as you get older, it becomes more and more ominous to learn any new device, you know? Even friends of mine who are animators, and they're like, oh, you can't do this anymore. Here, have this pad. Like portable typewriters, things like that. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I actually bought new batteries for my portable typewriter, because now I can... um... (laughs) No, I... uh... I put wheels on it. (laughs) I don't even drive into the agency anymore. I, I moved to an agent before 
we started recording at home, I moved to an agency that was closer to my kids' school and my house so that I wouldn't have to drive an hour, audition for an hour, drive an hour home, three hours, hours out of my day. Now, you know, I wake up in the morning, I click my emails, and there's four auditions to do in the morning, wow. and then I wait, and they come in all day long. Wow. Whether they're Boy, video you just get auditions or all day long. Just all, in. all day long. All day long. I got all day, right all before night. I came here. All night. How did you have time to sit down with us today? I had to schedule it in, Mr. Smarty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, called my agent on the way home from my session, had a discussion with her, got home, recorded two <clears throat> auditions, and um, took care of my little doggies who just got neutered. Oh, cone of shame! <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say that word without laughing. Yeah. This poor little puppy with the cone of shame. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so sorry for being all pathetic in this little, little cone. <laughs> he only weighs two pounds. The cone's like four pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's all very laughs> <laughs> he even left his head to eat. <laughs> Don't you just pour the food into the cup? <laughs> I, I put it on Facebook. I said, "Can't we cut these cones down?" And somebody responded, "Well, then you can't play basketball. You can't <laughs> work as a what, the, what do you call a net? Basketball hooper. Yeah. yeah. That's you awesome. toss napkins in at it. <laughs> Oh, I feel terrible. That's terrible. Just put <laughs> peanut butter on the napkin. They'll be fine. I had to, you know, stay hip and up with it and learn. I have these Mac guys who will come and sit with me every, you know, couple weeks and I have to pay them to teach me how to do this stuff because I, you know, and somebody, God bless his heart, built me a booth in the house awesome. and, and I, I have a mic and a booth and I know how to work my sound system now and I can record and I can cut out all the bad stuff, I can normalize, I can equalize, I can um, shorten it, lengthen it, I can do these amazing things that only engineers could do before. So I'm kind of like this well, you are an bastard engineer now. Engineer now. <laughs> yeah. I said awesome. a bad word on your show. Sorry. Um, <gasps> but there are a lot of... Anybody. There That's are the people first time who, that's ever happened. <laughs> it is challenging to keep up with all the stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. then I started doing these conventions where you go and you sit at, you know, Comic-Con or any of these different cons, and a lot of them are out of the state, out of the country... And when you do an audition's come in then. It comes into my iPhone. I have a portable booth I take with me. It doubles as a footstool on the airplane. What? I open it in my hotel room. I set up my Apogee. I set up my, my microphone, my iPad. <coughs> and I record and edit my spots there. I send them uh, either on an, uh, upload them to an FTP site or I can just send the MP3 files if they're short. It's amazing. And all my auditions, I never miss one. Even if I'm out of the country, I mean, I miss them if I fly overnight and you miss the day auditions. Or well, how, out of all the auditions, how many do you actually tend to get? On oh, I book every time? one of them, Lewis. <laughs> every one of them. Did you want to see my beautiful car outside? <laughs> Again? Is that a kid? It really, um, there's, there's no roadmap to this business. I think that was Debbie's there's way of no. saying none of your damn business. <laughs> it is your business, but it's, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Uh. I think if you don't enjoy the process of the acting business, there's you have no place being in it. Because it's not about, I mean, it'd be, it is about what you book because you have to support yourself. Mm -hmm. But I would say most of the stuff I audition for, I don't get. You wait for that one or two that you do get that pay, or you figure out how to make it work. Because okay. you work as in any business you I think it's the same in animation drawing you uh, work a lot harder for a lot less money it, it, yeah it just seems like uh, with with uh, with auditioning and, and voice acting and stuff like that <clears throat> you know you hear about authors pitch, pitching their books or trying to sell, get their books and getting the rejection letters and they have to send so many and get so many rejection letters back and all this uh -huh. other stuff it just seems like with like voice acting, that's it's the exact same thing, only it's more concentrated. Uh, well, yes, and there's there's another uh, iron that's thrown in here that wrecks things is that I'm not able to participate in any um, principal roles anymore in feature films because all of those roles have to go to well do go to on camera celebs. Mm -hmm. or A-list celebs of some sort 
I guess so, marketing mainly. They, yeah. they want a face to put with a voice? <laughs> they want a name. The, yeah, they want to be able to advertise They want a name to put with it, which I i don't know if I understand. Mostly I want to be bitter and yell at them. But <laughs> in reality, that's just in my world. That's the way it is in my world, which we're talking about just me today. It's my <laughs> interview. Uh-huh. Um, so... What is available to me? So back back in the smaller the, roles. Back in the classic days when Walt Disney was still alive and they were making, making feature films that were hand drawn and mm-hmm. uh, they were casting big names like Hans Conried. Uh, oh wait, he wasn't a big name. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Who is that? Captain Hook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was a stage. He was awesome. It uh you know, video games you can get decent roles on without being a an A-list celeb. Um, some of the smaller cartoons. But even the the basic cartoons on Adult Swim or something, there very few of them go just to you know, the core VO people that you talk about. We're I think more the utilities. So it, the business has changed. Everything's changed. Huh. Which sounds very familiar. Mm-hmm. But I love it. And I I will continue to learn how to work all the new gadgets and gizmos. Yeah. And that's the point. It's like when you do something you love, you want to involve with it. And you want to like, oh, cool, this is the new thing or the new way. I mean, it doesn't have to be a burden. You know, and it really, I think what you're saying reigns true across the board is you, uh... Thank you. If, if you oh, yay! Thank you. <laughs> Oh, you got grease. I just got a you fry. Got grease on Bart. Uh, I just got a French well, fry. Bart is approaching adolescence, and he probably has grease on his face. <laughs> if anybody else wants fries, I'll pass the plate around. I'm good on fries, thanks. Thanks, Debbie. I just gave Chance my fries. <laughs> they are delicious. Today's episode is brought to you by Oscar Mayer fries. <laughs> Oscar Mayer. Oh, I thought you were going to say the letter A. <laughs> <laughs> The letter I love F that. for fry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or PH. Yes. I like it. Yeah, that's so cool. That's Is that so Louis Anderson? No, it's the guy over there. <laughs> over where? Am I missing him? Oh, with the bar. With the bar. Oh, Thanks. oh, I see him. <laughs> <laughs> so Louis is sketching and Debbie's getting distracted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is why I can't watch the news at night. I have to listen to the radio because... I won't have any idea what the weather is. I'll be looking at the weather, and then the girl comes on with look the dress. Look at that nice dress. I'll yeah. be like, what is she wearing? Look at that dress. Look at how short it is. That makes her look heavy. Should she wear that many stripes? <laughs> and then I'm like, is it going to rain? And she just said, oh, I missed it. <laughs> so I have to and listen to And the hurricane is closing in. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait, well, where'd you get the dress? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Please evacuate. <laughs> I have to do the same thing. I listen to stuff that I that I don't mm-hmm. really need to pay attention to because I will totally, it's like I've got a deadline, but I'm just like, oh, I love this part of Pee-wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the clowns turn into dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't remember them turning into dinosaurs. No, it's, I combine really, two oh, scenes. There's oh, a dinosaur oh, scene and oh, a clown okay. scene. They're both nightmares, though. Okay. Sorry, I went there. It's okay. <laughs> AG was in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Yep. <laughs> So Her yeah, e. Daly. my bestie. You know who she was? Is, is I mean, in, oh, in, Dottie. In, she's yes, Dottie. You, you hang with Dottie? Do you guys hang out? <laughs> I didn't well, mean that she would just do. she died. In fact, um, <laughs> I mean, who she is, played in that movie? This is what kind of good friends we are. <laughs> okay. Both of her daughters' births, I cut their umbilical cords, Whoa. and she cut my son's. That's awesome. Because we gave the husband's first right of refusal, and they got green and said, you know, Oh, I did. I did both of them. <laughs> you did? Yep. That's the kind of guy you right are. there. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I got, I got green. <laughs> How many do you have? Kids. <laughs> wow. <laughs> five. He held up five fingers. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I guess that, that didn't quite make good radio later, did it? No, when I mean, you hold up your hands or you make signs, we have to tell people what's going on. He's like 10 years old, by the way. Recording. There's no video to go with he it. He grew a beard so he'd look mature. <laughs> mature. I'm hiding, I'm hiding All right. face. And there's your mama right there. <laughs> and his wife. 
So what, what are some of the other things that you've done that are voice industry related? Like, for instance, what is looping? Looping is sort of like... It's sort of like, and I'm going to say that because the money's different and the um, credit is different. It's uh, additional voices on movies. So say um, on Toy Story, for instance, there's all those toys. In the long shots, you see all the toys. Well, principal voices take up five or six of those voices, but there's still more that is basically crowd, and that's called uh, ADR or looping. When you go into a film... Uh, in post-production before it's finished and put in these additional voices. Or say, for instance, um, the principal character's running down the street. Well, they're not going to mic her for that, but I am going to go in afterwards and add that extra noise. And they're not going to call the star in to do that when I can breathe for Kirst, what's her name, Dunst? I, I breathed a lot for Kirsten Dunst. That's funny. I went to I went to school with her. And you breathed with her, too? I, I wish. <laughs> 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 but so. all of that qualifies you to be oh, a cast so. member. So when the, um, oh. you know, it may, your name might only show up in, above Panavision before the last thing, but you're still accredited. I mean, and you still get your pension and health, and it still shows up. It's a, it's a really, to me, it's rewarding. To a lot of people, it can be very boring, like, like recording a books on tape. Okay. But to me, it's, I find it very interesting and um exciting the whole time and it's not just animated films that need looping it's yeah. any tv show you right know, so done. there's more work to do that yes there's uh, and you know on, on criminal minds or gossip girls or um you know murder she wrote or any of these tv series mm -hmm. that are um uh single camera the multi-camera show is not so much but definitely features and Luis is always trying to introduce me to these new wacky uh, types of entertainment, like what's that stuff that comes from Japan that you told me about? What's it called? <laughs> anime. Anime. Yeah, it's too bad you weren't doing stuff like that. I've done a lot of anime. Oh, yeah. you did it again. You said way in there. <laughs> <laughs> anime is is dubbing in a sense. It's dubbing, but uh, it's not necessarily as. Uh, what am I trying to say? It's not as. It's more focused than looping a film. Like when I loop a film, there's 10 of you and all of a sudden they say, okay, you guys are these screaming people coming out of this burning building. You're going to scream for 25 seconds and then you're going to get quiet and then you're going to all die. And so we'll watch the screen and we'll follow the screen. And we'll do it again and again to make bigger crowd sounds. In anime, like something like, like Zatch Bell, I did the voice of this guy, Zatch. Or um, in, in the, what's the guy? the big famous director Miyazaki films um, there's a bunch of movies like that that I've looped cool but wow. in anime it's done before the animation's all done and it just comes over here and you just put the voice in because mm -hmm. it, doesn't... it doesn't have to sync up necessarily it does have to sync up I mean oh, it does? you're thinking okay. Speed Racer in the old days <clears throat> it's and yeah exactly like it's like it's because it's speed done racer. we've got to go now yeah and yeah we've got to go now <laughs> and then the mouths keep moving exactly so now they're trying to avoid that and make it like pretty much all the other productions where it locks and anime has become a multi-billion dollar industry yep there are thank you cons pokemon like comic con it wasn't just pokemon. or um, <laughs> there are cons that are strictly uh, geared towards anime and the people that come to those will spare no expense in oh, the yeah. cosplay outfits, you know, when they dress up like it and it costs a fortune to get in. You can't just watch this stuff. You need to live it. They live it. <clears throat> yeah. And if it weren't for these fans that do nothing but live the cartoon that someone else makes up, which I don't understand, it's not my life, but it's how... They spend a great deal of their energy. It supports a lot of, of the productions, too, because there's yep. so much money in that. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. I mean, they pay for you to go to these conventions where I do my auditions in my hotel room and then go and sign autographs for Tenchi Muyo. In a cosplay outfit. I don't dress up. Oh, wow. Oh. No, you dress up. <laughs> you dress up. I don't dress up. <laughs> but it goes... It's, it's bigger than even your, that. Just show up in your bunny slippers and a cigarette hanging out of your mouth. And you can cut this part right. out, but you know, no, I'm not going to say that. Okay. 
Um, what do you want me to sign? So I've done a lot of looping and a lot of anime. And, yeah. Nice outfit. That's cool. What, what, are, really what, are, what are the biggest uh, anime uh, shows that you... Uh, I think Tenchi Muyo was a surprise. I didn't expect it to be so big. And yeah, Tenchi's huge. Yeah, I play this little, this little thing that's like a bunny spaceship cat called uh, um, Ryo Oki. And then I did Zatch Bell, of course. You didn't know this, did you? What? He's an anime fan. Oh. Yeah, I'm one of those nerds. <laughs> that I, um, don't, I don't dress up, but I have friends who do. I've done more, but I, I <laughs> can't sure, remember. Because <laughs> it, it all merges together, like the video game world and the, the anime world. It's, it's work. And I like it. I like cartoons better because you have a sense of continuity in anime. Uh, you just throw it into the booth and say, okay, uh, you are going to just say this, and there's the mouth, and no acting involved, just match the flaps. Or if you're doing a video game, they're saying, okay, you're soldier number one, you're going to die here. <laughs> you are soldier number one. Uh, I don't know what I am. It just, it all goes by in a blur, Larry. I'm, I can't I'm usually, imagine you as, hi. No, that's not Get a soldier. Get down quick! No. <laughs> hey, he's got the AK-47! <laughs> <laughs> they get you for three voices, so you might, if you go in as, I do this part called Tie Me on this game, Guild Wars 2, something like that. And so when I do her voice, then they, you know, for the same amount of money, they can throw in a few soldiers, or people dying, or townspeople. Cool. So you, you're constantly playing the tough guy. That's your role. First, first thing they Soldiers. call me in is... She's been typecast as... <laughs> I ain't going to kick your butt. I love it. That, I would, love be, it. that would be an awesome It's easier character. for them when they can call in someone and they can, you know, do the little kid voices and do the sweet little girls and the princesses <laughs> and then also have them be the soldiers. I can do a soldier. Let's Shut hear up. it. Let's hear it, please. You have to prove it now. <laughs> <laughs> we're recording. <laughs> All right, we're going in. <laughs> See, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're laughing Woo. at me. <laughs> we're, we're laughing with you. It's not No, you're not. You. You're laughing at me. <laughs> One, four, three. <sighs> One, four, three. Yeah, that, sorry, that's pager code for I love you. It is? Yeah. That, 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 that's like a junior <laughs> I thing. Oh, wow. okay, right, you get it? Do you get it now? Like, yeah. Because it's I is one letter, love right. is four. Yeah, so we used to, t like, that was a whole thing. Wow, what the? What? Is this, like, way <laughs> over your head? When you would you page, remember, do you guys you remember numbers, pagers? You could put in the Barely. numbers. <laughs> There's and these then things it would called come iPhones. Up. Instead of have you heard of texting? Yeah. yeah. How about emoticons? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is actually all write current. real words. We're talking yeah. about ancient technology now. <laughs> is that when you wrote when you put numbers on the calculator ancient and turn it upside down and, 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 and yes, that's <laughs> the much. same thing. Because see, back in the day, kitties, before there was seven this zero uh, <laughs> something something yeah three. That's part of love. Yeah, no, yeah, seven zero. What the heck would the V be? I don't remember how to spell love. Thank you for listening <laughs> to the corner booth. Apparently, we've lost half of our listeners now. Because most of them are going, "What's a page?" Yeah, that's what I was about to get into. What was the thing she was talking about? A type what? writer? Writer? <laughs> Rotor? Uh, yeah, the, the the pagers. You couldn't text. But guys, remember you? You don't remember? You were not even born yet. You couldn't. You couldn't text. Faces and pictures and yes, all that you stuff. Can. You could only send numbers on you pagers. Can. And then somebody got brilliant and did a, a colon paren. Colon yes. parenthesis. And it was over. Uh, it was over. <laughs> over. <laughs> yep. And then somebody just got more and more clever from there. Yep. Which is, is the greater song, greater than or less than? Is I the angry do eyes? not know. Uh huh. Oh, the angry eyes. Or the sad yeah. eyes, which depending on which one. I think one, one you has do. to be a greater and one has to be a lesser, right? No, you have to do the greater than and then the colon and then the parenthesis. What are we talking about? We <laughs> We're talking about me. Me and my career and how okay, much I you, love voiceover. Can, will they allow you to do Jimmy Neutron's voice? Can, can we hear oh, it? Yeah, they can. Hold on, I'm going to go out to my hovercraft uh, and I'm going <laughs> to fly over the candy bar, which happens to be next to Buchanan Arms. Yes! Ah, do they have purple flirt here? <laughs> purple flirt martinis. Yeah! <laughs> I'm never going to see Jimmy Neutron the same again. That's awesome. <laughs> 
So and Debbie I, has ruined your dream. <laughs> She's ruined the, the, the masquerade. Guys, if you listen... That's the cosplay you have at home, too, isn't it? You have a Jimmy Neutron costume. <laughs> if you listen closely... You can I don't actually, even dress up for Halloween. <laughs> you can actually hear the fantasy crumbling. <laughs> the, the shattering. Oh, I didn't mean to shatter you. It was really the anime fantasy. stuff that he was really geeking out about. I'm just kidding. It can't be shattered. It's too powerful. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. too strong. Hold his own. <laughs> Silence. The end. <laughs> Thanks for having me. What are you working on now? Oh, just stuff. A lot of stuff. Who <laughs> said that? Well, isn't that the next question? <laughs> no. We're oh, supposed okay. to go, Larry, ask me this. Larry. Um, so, Debbie, what are you up to now? Oh, good golly, Larry. I am... Um, <laughs> so busy. So busy. I'm so busy. I spent all summer at conventions. And uh, somehow or other, people, no, like going there and signing autographs, and people wanted to that is uh, awesome. um, study with me. So now I have people coming and studying with me, which. Oh, can I take a class? You don't need a class. You should be teaching classes. I uh, have, yeah, but mostly in, in the drawing how part. To, well, draw or how to make movies, you know. See? Anyway. Um, I just, I love what I do. I just audition a lot. I'm working on, you know, different projects and. Uh, What's one you know of? Do you have anything for sale? Maybe people I want have, to buy something online. Well, I got my kids' CDs online, and I got my book, Baby Banana and the Licorice Tree, online. <laughs> I have my dogs and my the, son. The, the hit song. They're not for sale, though. <laughs> and, um, not at any price? Uh, the dogs. No. Definitely. Oh, the dogs I would sell. <laughs> <laughs> for like a million dollars, I would sell them probably. But the son, no. I'm not selling him. That's I'm waiting good. for my next big cartoon series, which I'm hoping will come soon. Cool. I have a, you know, a McDonald's thing that runs all the time. I'm their voice of this boy, Ferris. And, um, he, Does he need to be saved? No, it's Ferrol. Oh. No, Ferris. He's um, on all the Happy Meal commercials that if you don't watch kids' cartoon stations. I do, I though. Okay. I, w- I watched, I, like, oh. my default channel is Cartoon Network. Okay. And just well, put then, that on in the background. So I hear this. I, I'm sure I've heard you many yeah, times. Basically, on there. I just I go in and I I do my little boy thing. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, excellent. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and excellent. then I um do you know Alka Seltzer, that little guy, Speedy Alka Seltzer. Oh, cool. It's a cold truth. Um, <laughs> it's like they're all here stuff. right mm-hmm. now. This yeah, is cool. They are all here, running around the table, making a mess. <laughs> Every time she starts to do a voice, Chance closes his eyes <laughs> and looks up in the sky. I don't know what he's doing. So who are our, our people listening? Who are these people? Hi, people. I don't know who you are, but you can go to DebbieDerryBerry.com. That's, That's actually a good idea. D-E-B-I-D-E-R-R-Y-B-E-R-R-Y.com. It's a ridiculous name. It's just like it sounds. Is there Except that it only has one B. The first Debbie. name, okay. yeah, well, they, they, great. well, the last yeah, name was yeah, so thanks. long that I had to shorten the first name. <laughs> and I never get it wrong. Other people do. But if you just remember that the last name's so long, like Strawberry or Huckleberry, that the first name's just as short as you can make Debbie. <laughs> E-E-B-I. And you can call me, like, Debi Deribri. Debi Deribri. Debi Deribri. That's Debi Deribri. And, um, what else? I ain't, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> Deb Deb, because, like, if you, Deb, obviously, short for Deborah, or, or Debbie, and then you have, like... Obviously. <laughs> okay, you know what? Indubitably. Say indubitably. Okay. Indubitably. Indubitably. <laughs> oh, dear boy. Yeah. Is he doing that smart alecky thing again? Well, He's good at that thing, that smart alecky <laughs> thing. I'm I gotta assu- hand it to you, bro. I'm assuming that Jimmy Neutron was your favorite. Of all the, or you know, was he, it? he was a big favorite, but I really liked that. Uh, I did that thing with uh, Howie Mandel, Bobby's World. Oh, yeah. Remember, he had his friend with the long pigtails. Her name was Jackie, and she always had wise things to say to Bobby. Uh, that was a super fun cartoon to do because we got to record all together in the same room. Oh, that's great. And which one was this again? Uh, Bobby's, Bobby's World. World. I loved Bobby's World. What's your favorite day to record? Because I started, I started on Film oh, Roman when they were doing Bobby's World, and that's one of the very first things that I actually ever saw I be done, Tom and Jerry done in production. 
And which voice were you? Did you say already? Jackie. I'm sorry. Awesome. Jackie is girlfriend with the long pigtails. <sighs> cool. And she always had wise things to say. <laughs> like her mom watched Sally Jesse Raphael. Well, yes. <laughs> What's your favorite yes. day of the week to record? Hmm. I don't think I have a favorite day. Well, I, I like. I, I mean, if it's, it depends what I, it is. If it's going to be tough, it would have. I what? thought it would be Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday, because I won the Adams family, and I was the voice of Wednesday. I am, she didn't have a lot of energy. She liked when the sky was cloudy and gray. <laughs> uh, I get it. I thought you were, like, being serious, because there are shows like Tasmania that we had to only record on Friday because it was so stressful. Come to Tasmania. <laughs> we'd need, Jim would need a whole weekend to recover after that. And oh, me, man, too. That, that was a tough voice. <laughs> it hurt. I can't believe I booked and then, it. And then he go, and then he go, over, then he go over to Disney and do Winnie the Pooh next. Oh, okay. yeah. oh my god! No, we definitely had to do that session on Fridays. So I thought I didn't realize. See, you catch me every time these segues happen. He gets me. I'm like a big stupid. I'm like um, a natural blonde or something, <laughs> which obviously I am. <laughs> what? Well, what other uh, Warner's uh, cartoons? That's it. In the whole world, that's it. <laughs> In the whole world. Tasmania. And, um... <laughs> what is it, Larry? <laughs> He's, like, singing the, um, the, 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 the password theme, the Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was singing They're Tiny. They're tiny. I, but I don't want to talk about that. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that. Anyway, it's a long time ago. You can talk about it now. No. I don't. I should. It's I been as long as years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was a years ago. <laughs> I'm um, working with a couple guys, uh, Andrew Austin and Jim Stahl, pitching some more cartoon series that I have a finger in, and we've been, you know, developing for a while. And cool. Who knows what's going to happen? You can pitch it for all kinds of things, for, yeah. you know, educational based web things or, you know, international or cartoons. There's just you just never know. It's just such a big world. You never know where to put you what. And one time you're pitching and they say, we want um, just just character-driven fun. And then you go in with character-driven fun and they're like, oh, didn't they tell you we're educational now? We need educational. So no oh, fun. Yeah, no fun. <laughs> they couldn't possibly <laughs> couldn't po You couldn't possibly switch it, the, you know, the, yeah. the storyline a little bit and make it, no, sorry, move on, next. You missed the boat. It's crazy. What? It's crazy. So I just have my fingers in a whole bunch of stuff. Nice. Teaching and video games and, and auditioning, animation and commercials and um, animation for, you know, regular like the commercials and then cartoons and... As an artist, di diversification is the best way to survive. I think it yeah. might be the only way. I think Say that again, but louder, dude, because that's very important. <laughs> yeah, people that are listening might want to actually hear your voice. <laughs> I said diversification as an artist is uh, is pretty much the only way to survive. And and by artist you mean only those people that draw and paint and do visual media? No, I mean. Oh, you mean people that act too, like <laughs> well, that, Debbie. That is why. <laughs> That's why I say she's basically an example of an artist who is diversified. I didn't get that. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little slow. <laughs> and over the holidays, I did book an on-camera spot as an elf for one of the Samsung commercials. That was a stretch, <laughs> let me tell you. Because you're too tall? <laughs> they can't see. They, For all they know, I could be six feet tall, oh, Mr. Oh, Whitaker. Yeah. Sorry. They wouldn't know I'm 4'10 and a half. And a half. So any advice for people that want to get into doing voice work or into film, like, you know, listen to your parents, stay out? Or <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything in the world that you would like to do besides be an actor, do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first run screening for The Hills advice we've had on this show, I think. And being, if you want to get into voiceover, it's it's an acting job, so you need to take acting, acting lessons class. or acting classes. Be in a, you know, a, a theater uh, production or um, take classes so that you can actually experience the acting aspect of it. Every uh, 
every aspect of the business has different timings. You know, if you're going to be on a camera commercial, it's different timing than, say, a sitcom. It's different timing than, say, a dramatic series or a, a feature film or something that's, um, you know, animated or super high energy or maybe more... Uh, promo is different than radio commercial. Everything has its own pacing and timing and it's it's all about being able to act and adjust in every situation and you're not going to be good at everything. What so, do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, you and me are different. Oh. Okay? <laughs> but I'm just saying most people... There are people, exceptions to the rule <laughs> and they're sitting in this table. <laughs> but you may not know what you're good at so you may need to explore a lot of stuff. You need to take acting classes, improv classes, and uh, take from people that, that know what they're doing, and, and just lots of practice. I will say that when I have taken acting classes in the past as a professional, always, always, always there were professionals in the class. Like I took classes and Bill Farmer was in the class. Mm -hmm. You were you working when you were working, right, when yeah. I was taking classes? I'm just kidding. I knew you were working. I guess I was working. <laughs> and uh, who else was in our class with us? <laughs> Oh, the girl from the Go-Go's. Go -Go's. Uh, uh, Jane Weedland mm -hmm. was in class with us. Um, so you will rub elbows with people who oh, are yeah. working. They're working right well, now, like, but yeah, they want yeah, yeah, to keep yeah. their skills. Sure. Well, I still take classes. I don't always tell them who I am when I'm taking it. <laughs> okay. Like I took an on-camera commercial that was a beginning on-camera commercial class. And it was probably the last week that they found out that, oh, I, I do work. I do make a living in this business. I, I am... Uh, known in my tiny, tiny, tiny little world, <laughs> Cool. but not necessarily on camera. I'm not Flo from, you know, Progressive Insurance, but yeah. I'd like to be. <laughs> you can always study and learn more, Very but you true. can't just get into voiceovers. Oh, you really want to just to get, yeah, people say I talk funny. People say I have a good voice. It has nothing to do with it. Yeah, it has yeah. absolutely nothing to do with it at all. And these days it has to do with, you know, how willing you are to to learn the, um, the devices and to uh, be available to record these auditions, to go get your coaching help if you need to. I mean, I have people who have national campaigns for radio commercials coming to me to get coaching for an animation audition because it's that big. I mean, if you can land one of these TV series, it it's, it's, can hold you for a while. Cool. Yeah, especially, yeah, I mean, you're recurring advice. character... They just keep doing new episodes. That's awesome. To me, it's all, any acting is just, it's just fun. But any, my advice to anyone is don't even, don't bother. I don't, don't hurt yourself. It's too hard. Unless you love it. Unless you love the process. Yeah, there's all the, always the mm -hmm. people out there that have no choice because that's all they've ever wanted to do. And that's basically that's the like, one. you're and the ones that those are the people that are working. To. Yeah. But even if you're not working, you're still, I mean, I, I have lots of friends who, you know, still have their day jobs or are okay with making $150 a week. They just make it work with a lower rent apartment because there's nothing else they want to do. So, you know, God bless you if you have a passion and it's nice if you can find something to, you know, to feed that passion. Yeah. It's, it's a shame if it's acting, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> You'll make it work for yourself because you want it bad enough and you have to want it bad enough because you're going to have to work really, really hard. And you have to enjoy the process because, like I said, I auditioned probably for 100 things this week and uh, I don't think I booked one of them. But I never know, and sometimes I know yeah, six you, months later. Right, re and rejections, oh, yeah, right, it's like rejection's right. never personal, too. That's one of the big things and people have to And it's not rejection. <laughs> exactly, it's just we went a different way. That doesn't mean we didn't like what you did. There could be... You, you, well, they so, might not have liked what you did. Well, very <laughs> few kidding. people do. Thank you so much for pointing <laughs> that out. <laughs> I know, I love there are it. So, there are also, there are so many people that do similar types of voices because if you're if you're doing voice work unless you are unless you are doing your voice there are those out there who they have their one voice that's very popular like um oh uh the original Winnie the Pooh uh uh, uh Sterling uh -huh. Holloway he never did anything but Sterling Holloway mm -hmm. most voice artists that I have known have a range so they have different types of voices that mm -hmm. they, that they and do and you really have to be and able and there's competition to... in that mm -hmm. yeah Cool. Yeah, and then the skill set of changing, <clears throat> changing your range in the voice. And I did a audition yesterday for with five different characters. One was a an Irish, an Irish twelve year old, 12 -year -old tough boy, and then there was a um, 
There was a southern one, and he was kind of a wing up thing. Do you know this person? I do. Uh, some annoying people. <laughs> Somebody's approaching our table. Jeez. How you doing? What's up, brother? How you doing? Welcome to our It's good to see you, man. I forgot That's your name. Chance. 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 I, I thought How are you? Lewis. Larry you're Whitaker. Being, you're being recorded on our podcast. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Chris. 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 Debbie Whitaker. Derryberry. What's the name? Debbie Derryberry. Debbie Derryberry. I, I talk like a baby. <laughs> right on. Are, are you serious? Yeah, oh yeah, we're, we're doing a show right now, man. So but it's a, it's a, so what do you do, Chris? Since, since My name is Chris Bolden. I yeah. used to be a background designer on The Simpsons. Uh-huh. Yeah. See who dropped by the corner booth? <laughs> and now I'm across the street at Starburns Industries. What do you do there? On, I'm, uh, well, I'm... I'm on Rick and Morty, the new uh, show on Adult Swim. Okay. I just saw the first episode of that I've ever seen. I really liked it's it. It's an man. epic show. It's, re- yes? it's insane. It's crazy. It yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Who's casting that show? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's a show. Um, it's created by uh, Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon, the creator of Community. Okay. Um, it's a sitcom. And, um, but I'm currently between seasons, but we just got signed for our second season, which starts end of April. Congrats, But man. Uh, right now we're working on it. Do you guys remember the old uh, G.I. Joe cartoon from the early 80s? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So Community, the sitcom, is doing a... Um, a an all twenty two minute GI Joe cartoon with the there? community characters as GI Joe characters. Awesome. <laughs> so, is any of the information you're giving a secret? <laughs> do I have to edit this we're, out? Because we're on. We're on. Hold on. Do you understand what I'm so anyway, so anyway here uh, I want to be on your show. Foster freeze right now. Give that to the and, people um, and tell them it's working, me. Um, he cares. A, <laughs> a great deal. And um, so anyway. <laughs> but awesome. uh, so yeah, man, just uh, that's great, dude. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, things have been really good, and um, and they just got off of a of a show called Planet Famous, a pilot for Dana Carvey, who's mm-hmm. um, pitching his own show where. Like, um, NASA has been secretly taking the DNA from actors and creating this planet full of <laughs> famous people. That's <laughs> funny, dude. I like so, it. I like which, it. Which gives Dana a venue for his voices and stuff like that. So, looks like they got you, like, locked in here. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, there's no real easy way out, at least for Lewis. <laughs> well, I'm the one they have to lock in. They didn't want me going. We're trapped! Out. I see Lewis has his uh, sort of debonair. Well, no, it's just because I, I forgot to take it off. It's freezing in, in my in my office. Outside, inside. yeah. <laughs> it's freezing in my office. Outside, in Southern I'm California. Sorry, you're in the middle it's of the interview, but good, nice to meet you guys, Derry nice Berry. Nice to meet you, Chris. Larry Whitaker. Larry Whitaker. Larry Whitaker. We should with Cornerstone work. Animation. I mean, no. those ghost movies. Ghost Train. Ghost <laughs> movies. <laughs> Cornerstone was my old company, but thanks for reminding me. Corner Ghost Movies. That was when there was room left. You see, there was a spot for that. Animation director. We worked in the same business. (laughs) Debbie's done voice work for years. And he used to work at Film Roman too. Like we were all in the same building too. Cornerstone gone. Now it's Ghost Train Pictures. He's a brilliant animator. Thank you. Debbie does voice work. Jimmy Jimmy Utron. Right on. That's awesome. Cornerstone. Any sort of like. Well, Cornerstone doesn't exist anymore. Okay, but... take Cornerstone <laughs> Thanks for and bring that, that up word. Forget <laughs> that word. He's Ghost Train Pictures. Ghost, Ghost, Train's Ghost got Train s- Pictures. Ghost Train's got some really cool stuff in there. <laughs> gotcha. Awesome. Very cool stuff. I've seen some of it. Oh, you busting it out? Well, Let's do it. I <laughs> find the two biggest nerds on the show. Uh, <laughs> well, he was in my animation. Simpsons? Yes. Oh, awesome, well, man. Thanks, dude. I How's was your mom? I was a guest teacher. She's good. She's good? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking. I was a guest teacher when he was in college, and I was teaching animation, and you took my animation course. What college did you go to? I went. I actually went to Cal State Northridge, which is one of the first times I ever met Larry. He was a, it, like talking to our class. He came in and, and and talked about the industry with Rocky. That was awesome. Dude. I'll never forget wow. that whole speech. Film spirit. Is there like a religious connotation behind this? Ghost train. Film spirit. Oh, spirit. Okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, guys, I won't keep you. No, no, it's dude. Because it was, I, I could easily jump in here and just, like, rob your internet. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, you well, kind of did. You, you know what? Info, we, might you we might be giving you a call. We might be giving you a call. Yeah, see, but this is... Totally, man. Just, dude, um, my serve. dog got neutered. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> and we're back to the color uh, shame. Yeah. Color shame. Is there it's any? Funny, it's funny thing about dogs is you can. The, top, the, the two times when you could really see the shame in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the, two times, the two times when you can really see the shame when in their eyes pooping. is when they're pooping. They can see the vulnerability. In their uh, eyes. This is the only time that you could bite me. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they got the calm, cone you of shame, could, you could see the embarrassment. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do, uh, um, is there any way we could contact you or something? So yeah, that we uh, could... I'll give you my number. You don't have a card you can whip out no, like you we might want to pause this. this. Why not? <laughs> you don't want the number on the well, we'll record. Just write it. We'll it. We'll <laughs> write it Why interrupt the flow? <laughs> Actually, you know what? Here. Back this to the defense bad. commercial. Sorry, I can't believe it. Oh, oh what, what kind of soup do they have? Kaka Leaky. Do you know they have a soup here that's called Kaka Leaky soup? Kaka Leaky? It's what you have when you wear Depends. But it's delicious. Well, a friend of mine's writing a novel. It's called Di From Diapers to Diapers. Diapers. Oh. I like that title. I really like that title. Oh, yeah. I that get makes it. me sad. I get it. It is. So old. It's, it's yeah. sad because it's true. It's <laughs> sad because it's true. Why? Because you're closer. It's funny because it's true. Did you see this eye get a little smaller? Me. I want to give you my <laughs> website, too. I almost okay. did. That's Sir Forever, two Fs. You have a good memory, too, Chris. Thanks for asking about my mom. <laughs> Breast cancer survivor, still yes. strong, still going. Awesome. Um, I know she's it. past the 10-year no, mark but I touch yeah. on that. So I'm, that, I can't believe that it's been that long, but I'm so happy and thankful that it has. You know what I mean? It doesn't we'll time see. flies. Take some time. So. Some things we remember, some things we don't. Like, I've already forgotten your guys' names. <laughs> Debbie, Gary, Barry. Debbie, Gary, and... Yeah, make sure... Debbie, Gary, Barry. Debbie, Gary, Barry. Whitaker. Whitaker. Larry Whitaker. Whitaker. Larry Whitaker. 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 Yeah, make sure to pass right, on her info to Good the... Good to see you guys. You too, man. You guys How are great, that great folks, man. Back we at are. you, bro. We're going to keep in touch. I'm going to get your info from him, and we'll catch up more. Yeah, give me a buzz anytime. Okay. Hi, All right. Thanks, Chris. Take care, bro. <laughs> now back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Who has to edit this? I do. Oh. Yeah, he will be Thank editing you, this one apparently. Thank Thank you, bro. Bro. How do you know it's still recording? It's locked on. Like it won't stop till it, we tell it to. Not We've been record. going for an hour. Yeah, that's actually. We gotta bad. wrap it up. Yeah, okay, that's bye a perfect bye. length. Go to blast. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I've learned is it is hard to get Debbie to stop talking. <laughs> do you want to know what I'm going to do the rest of the day? No. <laughs> I thought, I, oh, you I should have seen her face. It was priceless. It was, that was so acting. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> there, and that was awesome acting. Yeah, I loved that. That was so method much. acting. I thought, the, I thought the show, I thought, I thought it was about her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> oh, um, that's funny. You should ask. I'm going to go home and... Take my dog with his cone of shame out to have some po poopy and be shameful. And <laughs> double then, shame. Um, double shame. I'm going to do some doggy <laughs> double shame. And then I'm going to pick up my son. And uh, and his tutor's going to come. And um, Laugh at the dog. And we're going to laugh at the dog. Cool. Yeah. And I'm going to probably pack lunch for tomorrow for him and, you know, clean my house. And there might be a, a, little, a little thing of poo on my floor. <laughs> oh, no. That's huh. it. And then this weekend is just family stuff. Thanks for asking. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I'm glad. I'm actually glad that one of you brought that up yeah. because I was going to ask you what a day, like a typical day in the life of was like because you were talking about being sort of all over the place all the time. You, you, you don't want to know. You do. I'm going to tell you. Shut up. Listen. Thank okay. You. I get up. I make my kids lunch and get them off to school. And then I go to the gym. And then I come back. And then I knock out how many auditions I have to do. And then either I'll have a student or I'll have a job and then I'll do some more auditions and I'll pick up my son from school and then the opportunity to audition is over until um, he finishes his homework and he gets on the Xbox and I ask him to mute it and I record some more. Okay. And then, um, yeah, and then we crash. Cool. That's awesome, though, because it sounds very flexible. It is, and it's it's very busy and it's it's a lot of work all yeah. the time. Yeah. Like you guys, you, you try so many things and you work at so many different things and very few of them pay you money, but... There might be one that does. Yeah. I mean, I I'm paying never, you I've for today. That <laughs> I'm giving you money for interviewing. Back to exceptions of the rule. Thank you, Mr. Perfect. No, uh, right. <laughs> well, when you draw, it rains money. Is that uh, what you're saying? <laughs> Unfortunately, it truly is pennies. Pennies from heaven. Yeah. You guys, thank you for having me on your show. I am honored and am... 
as always, it's great to see you, and, and, and uh, good luck can, to all of you. Can you Thank repeat you the, so the website? And yeah, www.debbiederryberry.com, D-E-B-I-D-E-R-R-Y-B-E-R-R-Y.com. And, and there um, you could you could uh, in links to uh, your albums and yeah it has my CDs. How old are you? Has my CDs? <laughs> I, I'm kidding. No I'm so much older anymore, than him. Right? No, it's all digi boxes. I don't know what they are. So um, when you used to work with June Ferre back when she was a kid, what was <laughs> <laughs> you're so silly. I didn't work with her. She's shorter than me. <laughs> that's not why I would now. Didn't work with her. <laughs> and that's the only <laughs> <No>. reason. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can see all my voices and the class schedules and my convention schedule appearances and all my characters I've done, and um, you can buy my kids' CDs, and I also make hand cream. I know, it's ridiculous, but, but some people cool. are really good at chocolate chip cookies, and I What's make hand cream. What's the hand cream made from? It's made from all kinds of natural um, ingredients without any minerals or parabens. Or dogs. Or dogs. There's no <laughs> dog oil in it, and I make lots of different flavors, and I, it's just Flavors? Fun. Sense, sense. Can't oh, what kind of hand cream is it? <laughs> I'm uh, looking for some in my purse. For your toast? Yes, ah. it's a floor wax. It's a dessert topping. Well, cool. Thanks for uh, joining us, Debbie. And everyone, thanks for listening again. Don't forget to check out Ghost Train Pictures. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's over. <laughs> you can check out Ghost Train Pictures on Facebook or go to ghosttrainpictures.com. And the next time, we will uh, be talking about something interesting. <laughs> in the industry, or, or we we'll, don't even or know Or we'll yet. be interviewing each other or someone famous like Debbie. So until next time, we'll see you at The, the Corner, Corner Booth. Booth.